Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Technique Tuesday, where every week we're gonna break down the lost art and science of training technique. This week, my girlfriend Stephanie and I are gonna be looking at how to perform the glute kickback with perfect technique. Uh, but before we jump into the technique itself, let's first take a quick look at what muscles we're going to be targeting. Now, so with the glute kickback, we're training almost pure hip extension. So basically when you take your hips from a flexed or bent position to a straight or extended position, and this is the same basic biomechanical movement pattern you perform in the hip thrust, deadlift, and the squat, where the glutes drive the hips forward, except here we're leaning more forward and the hips are extending with the legs back behind the torso. There will also be some degree of knee extension occurring where the quadriceps contract to take the knee from a more bent to a less bent position. However, as we'll see, since the goal here is to isolate the glutes, we want to consciously minimize the knee extension portion of the movement. So unlike every other exercise we've covered in this series so far, uh, because the glute kickback only acts on one joint and utilizes most only one muscle group, that actually has a pretty limited capacity for overload, meaning it should be loaded in a higher rep range, around 12 to 20 reps. And since the ability to overload is more limited, rather than focusing on steadily increasing the weight over time, we're going to instead focus on progressively overloading through three other avenues. First, by improving the mind-muscle connection over time. Second, by improving or mastering technique over time. And third, by improving the pump over time, which can include increasing the reps. And one way to do that is just by adding one rep whenever you can while maintaining good form and a mind-muscle connection. Now, of course, you can increase the weight once you reach the top end of a rep range, such as 20 reps or more. However, at a certain point, further weight increases will simply result in form breakdown. And then at that point, you should just focus on these other three options. Now, of course, this can beg the question, why do this movement at all then? And I would say, like any isolation exercise, I think it serves two main purposes. First and foremost, it can allow you to accumulate more training volume for the body part you're trying to develop the most without creating much of a recovery demand for other muscles or joints. So in other words, trying to build your glutes at a higher priority than other muscles will be difficult if you only perform heavy compound movements. Some degree of isolation may be necessary to really optimize their development. And secondly, these types of exercises can function as activation drills for heavier movements. So for example, if you can develop a very powerful mind-muscle connection on the glute kickback, it's very likely that this ability will carry over to heavier, more complex exercises like the hip thrust. Okay, so to set up, you're gonna need an ankle Velcro strap as other attachments may cause pain or discomfort, which is really not a good thing since according to one 2005 study from Farina et al, pain centrally inhibits muscle excitation, meaning if your goal is to maximize glute development, you really don't want to be lifting in unnecessary pain. Hook your ankle into the Velcro strap and then line that leg up with the cable. You wanna lean your torso slightly forward at about a 45 to 60 degree angle so that you have a more consistent tension curve throughout the range of motion. And just standing upright will place the majority of the tension on the glutes only at the bottom. You wanna brace yourself against the cable machine while slightly leaning forward and slightly leaning away from your active kickback leg. With the knees slightly bent, you want to initiate the concentric by thinking about pulling the lower aspect of your glutes to the upper aspect of your glutes. And even though the exercise is called a kickback, I like to think of it more as a swing back since emphasizing the kicking component is going to shift emphasis onto the quads and away from the glutes. Whereas thinking about swinging your leg back and up in an arc will emphasize pure hip extension keeping the glutes at the forefront. You should also consciously think about keeping your hamstrings soft with more lax knees, which is further gonna shift that emphasis onto the glutes as the main hip extensor. You can also think about swinging the weight slightly out laterally, which will help target the upper glutes a bit more. However, above anything, I'd simply recommend finding a movement path that gives you the best combination of mind-muscle connection and comfort, rather than trying to force an awkward position just for some potential theoretical benefit. Now, the eccentric will be essentially reverse of the concentric. And the most important thing here is to really treat the negative as a sort of failed positive, where you're not just letting the weight fall down as your leg swings back in, uh, but rather consciously resisting the weight while feeling your glutes stretch under tension as you lower the weight under control. Since we're doing higher reps here, you wanna get in a nice, comfortable swinging groove and do your best to maintain a consistent tempo, meaning your lifting speed should be the same for rep one as it is for rep 15. Uh, so don't move the weight progressively fast faster and with less control as the set goes on. Now, ironically, I think the main most common error that I see with the kickback 
is simply kicking back too much. As I said earlier, too much kicking is gonna shift the emphasis away from the glutes and onto the quads. So as a fix, instead of just moving the weight back, you wanna really focus on squeezing your glutes to move the weight out and up in an arc. Another common error is having too much upper body movement. Although some upper body movement is fine, you don't want to rely on upper body momentum to carry your active leg up as a counterbalance. You should brace your upper body against the cable frame and keep it nice and stable, initiating every movement from the glutes. So donkey kickbacks are a reasonable alternative here, which you can set up on the lying leg curl or Smith machine. However, these machines tend to lock you into position more and can prevent that freedom of motion for finding an ideal movement path for your particular skeleton. So I prefer the cable kickback to these other machine-based variations, but they are an option. Okay, so that's all that I have for the glute kickback. Uh, before you guys click out just yet, I wanna quickly let you all know that both of my glute-focused training programs are going to be discounted for the next week. So you can get my glute hypertrophy program for $19.99, so about 35% off, and my women's specialization program for $29.99, so 25% off. Now the glute hypertrophy program is a five day per week upper lower split that trains the full body, but there is a special emphasis on the glutes and it's a bit more of a fundamental program designed for someone with more of an intermediate training status. So you can perform all the basic exercises safely, but haven't been trying to grow your glutes for say three to five years. And the glutes are hit four days per week because there is a bit of glute isolation work on one of the upper body days. Now the women's program is a more advanced program. You'll be in the gym six days per week with the glutes also being hit four times per week. Now, but the programming and exercise selection here is geared more toward women with more training experience or who have very stubborn glutes. Um, so anyway, you can check both of those programs out at the first links in the description below. And I've got a bit more information about those down there. Uh, so don't forget to leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss future Technique Tuesday episodes. And I'll see you guys all here next Tuesday for the hip thrust.